Welcome to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, on behalf of NASCAR, we're very excited about being here this weekend. We've got three exciting races uh, on tap, starting with tonight and then tomorrow night and then uh, obviously Saturday night with the uh, 55th running of the Bank of America uh, 500. So no better way to start out than to have our uh, last week's race winner and uh, a gentleman who has already punched his ticket to the eliminator round of the 2014 chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, and that's Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Pennzoil Platinum Ford for Team Penske. And Joey, congratulations on last week's win. Talk about now your mindset coming into Charlotte, then you got Talladega, of course, next week. But talk about your mindset as you prepare uh, for this r race weekend, knowing in the back of your mind, hey, I'm already in that next round. Yeah, it's nice to know you're uh, you're in because we were. I think everyone was very nervous about this round, um, knowing that it's it's not the round that's going to win the championship, but it's definitely a round that can keep you from winning it. Um, when you think of Kansas and Talladega both being in this round, and Charlotte was your one uh, somewhat normal racetrack that you go to that uh, you know you feel like you can really um, you know make a difference. And um, Kansas, we had a very fast uh, Shell Penzo Ford that was able to um, you know. Once we figured out the top lane, was able to go really fast and uh, get that win. So that's nice. And uh, our mindset now is uh, basically the same thing as what we had. You know, let's uh, keep going these racetracks, keep attacking, keep that momentum going. Um, you know, I feel like we can have a good uh, showing here again at, at Charlotte. And then, um, you know, we don't have to worry about Talladega as much anymore. So that's nice. And, um, you know, when we get to that next round, uh, you know, we'll try to um, win Martinsville and hopefully be in the same shoes again. But, uh, you know, for now, our, our mindset, like I said, is to go out there and win just like we've been doing. Thank you, Joy. Our first three questions will come from Jenna, then Mike Embry, and then Tom Jensen. Jenna Fryer, AP. Joey, I know that next week is a place where you really can help teammates if needed, but is there any emphasis or discussion or concern about making sure that Brad has a good run t on Saturday night? Um, I mean, we're going to do what we normally do. You know, we normally go out there and try to help each other, right? That's that's our goal. Is, uh, as a two-car team, we got to work very tight together uh, to make sure both our cars are fast. And um, I feel like that's something we applied to, to Team Penske a long time ago. Um, I feel like it's the main reason why I'm here today uh, working with Brad is because we work together. And uh, I think that's something very important to, to have. And um, if you're already doing it, it's hard to do it more, right? <laughs> so... We'll pretty much uh, do the same things we've been doing, working together throughout practice here, uh, throughout qualifying, and, and, and sharing our notes, talking about our race cars as much as we can, and then uh, race each other as smart as we know how to at the race on the racetrack. And um, you know, Talladega is a whole separate, you know, deal there, right? That's a different way of working with each other to get to the front. But when you come to a, a place like Charlotte, um, you know, there's only so much you can do on the racetrack to help your teammate. Um, and don't get me wrong, my goal is still to win. I might be greedy, but I, I want to win. <laughs> Next three questions will come from Mike, Tom, and then Viv. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Henry, USA Today. Uh, Joey, obviously you've been on a roll the last couple of months. What's harder, get reaching that point or sustaining that? I can't say I've ever been here before, so I'll let you know. Uh, you know, this has um, been a, a dream season so far, and, um, you know, when you get into the chase, you know, you expect it to get harder. Um, and you work harder and you try to find more and uh, when you think you're at 100% there's always that extra little bit in there you have to dig down deep to find and I feel like my whole team's done that and I think that's why you've seen the um, you know the the finishes that we've had uh, throughout the first you know four races so far with the a fourth a first a fourth and a first that's uh, if we keep doing that throughout the rest of the season we'll be we'll be pretty happy with it but um, you know I think it we haven't had a ton of speed at every si every single racetrack we've gone to. You know, you look at Dover, we were okay. Um, we got the top four. You know, you look at the, even Loudon, we won the race, but we were 16th there with a few to go, and we had tires and able to get our way up there. So I, I feel like our big deal right now is the way we execute our races, and I think that's been uh, our strong point. Uh, we've had fast race cars, don't get me wrong, but – uh, at the same time, you know, I think the way we execute the race and, and make sure we're there at the end uh, has been our, our strong suit so far, and we just got to keep doing that. We have to keep uh, digging down deep when, um, you know, when kind of the odds are against us and try to make the most of it. Next three, Tom, Viv, and then Lewis. Hi, Joey. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Obviously, some of the people who were favorites to win the championship are in a deep points hole now. 
Do you look at the standings and look at that and see that it increases your chances of winning the championship? It does. You know, um, I've been saying this whole chase so far that everyone's in it right now is a contender for a reason. Everyone's, everyone is someone you have to really think about as someone that can really win this championship. But um, obviously you look at the guys that have been fast throughout the whole year um, and, and you see them kind of in the, the bottom three right now. You know, that's uh, it's pretty surprising. I'm, I'm sure they're going to all have, you know, good runs this weekend. They're going to rise to the occasion, um, you know, and, and what's going to happen there. But like I said, this this is probably going to be a round that, that knocks somebody out that can win this championship or that, you know, had a really good shot at it. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate enough that's not going to be us this time. Um, but, you know, we can't, uh, you know, as Roger likes to say, you can't trip over your own press clippings and uh, keep working really hard and, and stay ahead of it. But, um, you know, when, if you think of uh, the 48 or one of those guys knocked out, and those are, I mean, by stats, he's your best, you know, your, your, the best guy out there that's going to have the best shot at winning this championship. So um, if you can knock one of those guys out in this round, that's great. You know, it does help your shot a lot. Next three will go Viv, Lewis, and Stan. Go ahead, Viv. Okay, uh, Viv Bernstein, New York Times. Um, I know every, you, everybody likes to stay in the moment and race to race, but uh, you're already in the, the top eight. Do you allow yourself to think about Homestead at all? Have you run that race in your head about 50 times, or do you not think about it at all? Um, I haven't thought about it at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I know you say everyone likes to think that way, but that's how I really do think. I am a race-by-race race person, and I think uh, just the way this chase goes, you have to think that way because it, that's going to change your strategy up on how you race these races also. So, um, you know, right now we're thinking about Charlotte. Um, we're thinking about our Martinsville test we got coming up this week. I think that's going to be a, a, key, uh, a key point for us. And um, these next two is just all about keeping the momentum going. You know, let's keep keep the ball rolling like we got. Keep everybody motivated. Keep our uh, our team going, and uh, you know, have a good test up here in Martinsville, and, and then you know, hit those uh, you know, Martinsville and Texas and Phoenix as, as hard as we can, and, and um, you know, get nice solid finishes at the worst. And, and if we can get a win, uh, you know, you're, then you're in really good shape because at that point you can't finish worse than fourth. So if you're able to win Martinsville, I think that's a huge advantage. Um, going into Homestead because you have quite a few weeks to, to be thinking about that race and not so much the other ones. But at this point of the chase, you're still thinking about the upcoming races before Homestead. Next three will be Lewis, Stan, and Dustin. Go ahead, Lewis. Yes, uh, Lewis Frank of Reuters to you right there. Um, <clears throat> when you started in, in Sprint Cup, a lot of attention on you. It was a lot of expectations. And now you've got five wins this year leading the po at this point. Do you feel any differently, you know, about distractions, more media requests? How, how are you uh, handling the spotlight? I think I'm doing okay. When it's a positive spotlight, it's a lot easier is what I learned. So <laughs> that makes life a lot better. Uh, so um, I've been okay with it. I'm enjoying it. You know, I think one of the, the coolest things about winning last week is the fact that we're the point leader now. Like, that's never happened for me. So um, having your truck, seeing your truck parked in the first spot and having that first you know, garage stall, and obviously it doesn't mean a whole bunch at this point, but it is something special. You know, it's just kind of cool because I've never done it before, never got to the points lead, so that just means a lot to me. And uh, I think it does this whole Shell Pennzoil team. And, um, you know, I've been able to, you know, handle all the, all the press and all that when it's positive. It's a lot easier for me. <laughs> okay, the next one's up will be Stan. Dustin, and then Marty. Stan Creekmore with CompetitionPlus.com. Um, does, does the fact that you survived the tire issues last week to take the victory make you even more confident that you have a chance at the checkered flag here this weekend? Um, yeah, I mean, as far as tires last week, I, I, man, you know, Obviously, setup goes into a lot. The driver, uh, also the way they drive the car, goes into that a lot. Um, you know, not saying we didn't have issues with our tires. Looking back at it, we had some um, close calls, but they were okay. Um, you know, and I, I don't think it makes us feel more confident about anything because, you know, obviously, um, you know, the, the more performance you get out of your car, the more at risk you're putting yourself with tires. And yeah, performance window is so small. The more you're aggressive with that stuff, the higher the risk is of something to happen. And um, we all know that. That's all a, a you know a gamble. We're all we all know we're taking and the risk we know we're taking. And um, but for that speed, you got to do that. 
Um, you know, Goodyear gives us the information we need to have to, to make those decisions, and it's up to us to make the smartest decision after that. Let's go with uh, Dustin and then Marty. Dustin Long, MRN.com. Uh, Joey, since you're just a youngin, um, a guy like Dale Jr. turns 40 this week. When you think about 30, when you think about 40 for somebody like yourself, what do you think about since those, especially 40, since I'm guessing that's probably such a, a far off universe to you? What do you, what do you think about it at 40? I got a long ways to go. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've said earlier this year, you know, I, I'm finally starting to see the benefits of starting as young as I did. Um, you know, obviously, I remember sitting right here for my 18th birthday and it had a, a cake in the car and it had my car out front and that was going to be my you know first race in Dover the next week and it was just a whole big deal and um, you know now I'm sitting here at 24 um, you know was, that was a while ago but I'm just now starting to um, you know see the benefits of starting that young and the fact that I feel like you know I'm starting to reach my peak I'm getting closer to where I feel like I need to be to go out there and um, you know it, and only being 24 years old, there's the advantage that I can do this hopefully longer uh, and at my peak than most uh, that started a little later. So um, that's all working out good for me. Um, it, it's crazy for me to think that I can possibly have another 20 years to my career, maybe even more. Um, and that's, that's a lot <laughs> to me. When you're only 24, 20 years sounds like a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. I, I'm looking forward to that opportunity. And um, to watch the way the uh, NASCAR sport um, changes and um, hopefully uh, I can be a player and help on how, uh, how we develop this sport. I feel like that's a role that, that's important to me and, and I feel like I want to be able to take on as, uh, as a younger demographic and trying to pull that, that type of fan in. I feel like that's uh, a position I should uh, take on as a, as a driver and help uh, our sport grow. We've got time for three more questions. Marty, Daniel, and then Brant. Marty, Daniel, then Brent. Go ahead, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Hey, Joey. Uh, you talked about reaching your peak and getting close there. You've been real fast over the past couple of years, certainly this year. What have you proven? What have I proven? Yeah. Uh, well, um, hopefully proven the, that I should be here. <laughs> um, ho hopefully that. But um, t to me, uh, that's an interesting question um, because, you know, you think of proven, uh, I mean, that's different to everybody, right? I mean, being proven could be winning a championship. It could be winning multiple races in a season. It could be, you know, getting top tens. I think it just all depends on who it is. To me, ah, I, mean, I don't think I'm ever where I want to be. And I think that's, that's just me personally is that I'm never, I'm never good enough. And I think that is uh, something that's gotten me to this point as a driver and as a person. Um, you know, obviously you got to take that within reason because you can't beat yourself up too hard because you won't have no confidence to do anything. But you have to uh, also at the same time push yourself and then, you know, know that you're not ever perfect. You know, you're never where you need to be because if you ever feel like you're there, it's only going to be a couple weeks till someone passes you. Um, so you always got to be looking ahead. And I think that's the attitude that I've had my whole life. And I don't think I'm ever going to be proven to myself exactly where I want to be. But like I said, I'm enjoying this, you know, the fact of being in the point lead for the first time and, and seeing some of the results of the hard work that you've put in over the last few years to, to see that. that. That part's really nice, but I guess I'm never where I want to be. We'll go to Daniel, and then final question from Brant. Go ahead, Daniel. Daniel McFadden with Sporting News. You mentioned you're going to Martinsville for a test. You got a top five there in the spring. What are you hoping to work on specifically at a track where you average about a top 15 finish? Um. Better than top 15, right? Uh, you know, we were able to go up there and, and have a, a solid finish. We led some laps there uh, in the spring, and um, knowing that it's going to be one of the most important races to, as far as getting us to Homestead and racing for a championship, we need to focus on that. And um, it's the same thing as you, you always fight with uh, Martinsville, right? You're obviously um, trying to break, turn, and, and then hook up 850 horsepower off that corner. It's not, not an easy thing to do, so that's why we're going to work on it. Um, you know, and, and make sure we understand what, what the parts and pieces we have are doing to the car and what it's going to do over a long run, um, you know, and seeing uh, some things that you get there and you can get kind of fooled into certain things. You see some short run speed and uh, after 50 laps, it's the worst thing you ever put in your car, you know. So I think just understanding, um, you know, what, what does what um, and, and 
obviously having speed on both the short run and the long run and uh, you know kind of going from there so it's a it's a tough place for sure and I think that's why we're going to use a test up there and um, you know we're not where we need to be at that racetrack yet um, I see Jimmy walking in here now he's he's the man there you know so we got to be able to you know catch him final question Brant uh, Brant James ESPN.com the expectation or anticipation of this sort of season has, has been with you since you were a pretty young teen, just because a lot of drivers thought so much of you. Has it felt like a long time to get to right here, right now? <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, you know, but but I, I've enjoyed the, the whole role of it. You know, the part that it's taken me so long to get to where I'm at now. I, I've, but without the experience I've had, it, I wouldn't be the person I am now. And, um, you know, I... I I love that I've got to go through all that because I can enjoy it even more now. I feel like I'm lucky I got to go through that to understand um, what it means to be sitting where I'm at right now and, um, you know, how bad you really want it. Uh, and I, I think it's something I needed personally as a person. And I think, um, you know, as a driver, it's, it's uh, very rewarding. And, um, you yeah, know, I make sure I enjoy the moment. Um, but I also make sure I got to, you know, keep doing what I've been doing to get here too. Thank you, Joey. And I think our Hall of Famer, uh, Dale Jarrett, you might have something. <laughs> sure. There you go.